In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how you hire a videographer or a video editor. Whether you're a business owner who wants to hire someone for a video, or you're an aspiring videographer yourself and you want to know how it works, stay tuned. So if you don't know who I am yet, my name is Peter and I have been freelancing as a video editor, video producer, video content strategist for roughly around four years now, starting off as a video freelancer for small corporate businesses and as well as working for big, big, did I say big, digital marketing agencies and helping them produce content. So why is it so important to understand the processes of hiring a videographer or a video editor is because it saves you time, saves both parties headache, and at the end of the day, both people get what they want, which is A, someone gets paid for their services, and two, is that deliverables and videos are made. So the first thing is, depending on whether you're a videographer or a business owner, is your budget. What are you expecting? Depending on the budget, whether you're on a shoestring bootstrap budget, I would recommend hiring someone to edit your videos and you film them yourselves is on Fiverr or Upwork. The thing about this is that you're getting a really cheap, anywhere from five to 10 to $50 for a full edited video and you yourself don't have to pay a lot out of pocket. But the big caveat is that, is that you're paying for someone outsourcing probably in the Middle East or in Southeast Asia, and they're gonna be a language barrier. There's gonna be inconsistency in communication. And three, let's be honest here, most video editors and videographers who literally can like charge literally nothing pennies in, whether you're in the US or the States, the quality isn't that great. But what you are getting used to is outsourcing. Which kind of leads me into the next point of your budget is my, from my personal experience, it's always best to hire someone locally. Why? You support videographers and video editors like myself, as well as you have a constant stream of communication. Okay, let's go on to the next point. So now you've decided your budget. The next thing is figuring out deliverables. What do you actually need as a company or what are you actually gonna make for that company? So when I first started out freelancing, companies needed one about us video for their Facebook page and their website. So that is what I like to call a deliverable. So as a business owner, if you can outline what exactly is it that you need video wise that makes the videographer and video editors job a lot easier in comparison to hey i'm gonna hire someone that does video but i have no idea what exactly or how many videos that they need xyz blah 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 what you want is a clear list of objectives whether you're a business owner or as a videographer what are you going to produce for them so for example i'm going to produce for you clearly stated in this outline and job posting or upwork posting or whatever the exact number of videos that i need the length of it and as well as what other other types of videos I need. Whether do I need an Instagram story, whether I need a Facebook post about this one big video. And leads into my next point is, how are you gonna charge? Whether you're a videographer or how much are you gonna purchase from this videographer's services? So are you gonna pay someone hourly or per deliverable, depending on the speed and the, the experience and expertise of that videographer, what are you paying for? So for my example, I am really quick as a videographer, or I like to, you know, put that out there. So for me, it would be a negative on my side if I charge someone hourly, because if I can edit a video, let's say I charge $20 an hour, and I edit that video in 20 minutes, where some people will take four hours, but at the end of the day, it's the same result, but mine's quicker, I lose money. So if you're in anything like me, you would want to charge per deliverable or overall for your strategy of video instead of hourly. For me, I 
highly like if I was all I did was video editing then maybe I would go for hourly but if you do things like you film you set up as well as produce the videos and then edit paying per deliverable on the business end as well as much more concrete rather than them calculating hours not making sure whether or not those hours are documented and then the list goes on and on and on and just to recap, now that you determine your budget, who you're gonna hire, where you're gonna hire, what videos are you gonna need to shoot, next is after all that's been done, make sure you yourself have a video plan. So what is it you're gonna shoot and film? And do you need the videographers or video editors help to direct and produce that video? So how much control are you gonna have? But from my experience, you want to have the videographer and video editor have creative control. Because there's nothing worse as a videographer and video producer myself is when the business owner or the owner is too hands on in the video editing process where they hired you to make videos but you feel very constricted because you're doing what they're telling you but you don't have creativity and in my experience when you have full creative control that is when you produce your best work in my opinion so now you outline your objectives who you're going to film and all that fun stuff next is the revision and editing process so as a beginner junior video editor you might not know this but once you produce the video you're going to need feedback and in the beginning, I really messed up because I didn't have a limited amount of revision rounds. In other words, I would send the video, the, the proof or the rough cut to the video or the business owner, and then they would, hey, hey change this from here, from 20 seconds to 26, eight seconds, I don't like that, take that out, okay? I make the change, I send it again. And they give me another feedback or another, so it goes back and forth numerous times, and on my end, I'm wasting my time on their end, they're wasting their time going back and forth on the video. So have revision rounds, and this is more for your videographers and video editors. I like to include two rounds of revision maximum, and if they want more revisions and feedback and they wanna keep e like editing and critiquing the video, as a videographer, you have the power to charge more because A, you're spending more time on the video and at the end, they hired you to be the video expert and if they wanted to edit the video themselves, then they could have done that. And those are the things of how you hire the proper videographer or video editor. If you wanna know the difference, let me know in the comments. I will make a video on that and if you haven't yet signed up for my email list, link is in the description below and sign up for my Skillshare courses and how you do video production, all that is in the comments. Sign up for my email list as well as I'm gonna show you the complete beginner's guide. There's free, it's free, it's link in the comments of all the equipment you need as a video editor and videographer. And my name is Peter. You're watching Broke Vision Collective and I hope this video helps a potential business owner, a potential videographer or video editor. And those are the things I wish I knew when I started this whole video editing as a full-time job. Broke Visionary, we all start with nothing, but you can always create something. Check out that links. I'll see y'all in the next one.